Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So if you're thinking of going on holiday, you may be wondering how on earth you're going to survive the airport. I know that that's a big concern for me when I go on holiday and it's a very real worry because airports are massive. There's so much you have to do at the airport. There's a lot of very long distances. So let's talk about getting special assistance at airports. One of the great things about airport special assistance is that you don't have to prove anything. You don't have to prove you have a medical condition or anything like that. You can just ask and they will give you the support you need. So how do you get it? When you book your tickets or check in online, there may be an option to ask for special assistance. You will need to ask before you get there because they like to know in advance. So if there's not an option in either of those two places, I would suggest calling them and talking to someone about it so they can tell you what is the right thing to do. So when you arrive, if you have a blue badge and you show the special assistance people the blue badge, they may give you a free parking ticket, which allows you to be in the drop-off area for longer and not have to pay, which is great if you've got, you know, a wheelchair to get out, if you've got baggage or if you need um, an assistance person to come to help you with your bags it just gives you a little bit of extra time to get that all sorted out and it's free so that's really great i would definitely look into whether your local airport has that system because i find it at bristol really helpful so when you arrive at the airport you go to the special assistance desk in the main lobby area and they will tell you exactly what to do you don't need to worry about memorizing what the steps are um whenever i've done it they've provided a wheelchair which is the main reason I use it. They can provide you with a wheelchair or offer you help with yours. I've never taken my wheelchair because I've heard some really bad things about wheelchairs going in luggage and getting broken. And also this most recent time I was going to a snowy place. So I thought the wheels aren't gonna be very functional there anyway. So I decided to go with the wheelchair they provide for the in airport assistance. The wheelchairs are varying degrees of good. The ones at Bristol are quite uncomfortable. They don't have wheels you can maneuver yourself and they have this weird contraption that means you can only push while you're holding the brake off, which I understand is for safety. They don't want you to roll away or anything like that. But when someone who isn't used to holding something while they push you, sometimes it's a bit jerky because she forgets she needs to hold it to stop the brake being on. So sometimes they provide like annoying devices. Don't get me wrong, a wheelchair is a wheelchair and it vastly helps me, but sometimes the device they actually give you is a bit annoying. When you get given a wheelchair, sometimes the special assistant person kind of comes like attached they're like a package deal sometimes they'll just give you the wheelchair and say you know do you need someone to push or if you've got someone else in your group who can they just leave you to it sometimes they insist that a special assistance person must come with you I don't know if it's so you don't steal the wheelchair or they can get the wheelchair back maybe they don't trust you I'm not entirely sure why but sometimes you have to have that person with you and I find that a bit annoying I don't love the wheelchair being pushed by a stranger. I don't particularly enjoy being around other people, especially in a stressful situation like an airport. I only want people I know. It's a bit annoying, but also it does mean that your other family members or whoever you're taking the trip with has more free arms to sort out the luggage or whatever. And if you need it, it's a great service. But sometimes they do provide a person when you wish they wouldn't, you don't need it. So some places do insist on that. So you have to be wary that you are going to have to be in contact with others. After you've gotten the wheelchair and you're either with or without a member of the special assistance team, what happens then? Well, it's different in different airports and this is the problem with everything. There is no set system. They've all got their own system and sometimes it can be a little bit unnerving because you don't entirely know what system the airport you're in uses. So the types of systems that I've experienced, sometimes they will take you through the completely normal baggage check, security, passport control, all of that. They'll take you through with everyone else, you'll queue with everyone else. Sometimes they'll have a separate queue, it's in the same area. So you'll effectively skip the queue because you'll be going to the specific disability queue. But some airports have a whole separate system. You'll go to a tiny little room and they'll check your passport. It's just one of those x-ray machines and one metal detector in a room and you just put your stuff through 
through it and like there's no one around that's the quickest way to get through any airport is for them to have a system where it's a completely separate room for passports and baggage and everything and you just go to this little area no queues but you don't have a choice over that so sometimes you do have to go and be in the main queue with everyone else for me i find it a little bit anxiety inducing being around that many people but because i have the wheelchair that they provided i get to sit down in the queue and that makes a really big difference anyway so it's honestly not that hard to go through the queues for me in that situation when you go through the whole x-ray baggage and metal detector bit sometimes they'll ask you to get out of the wheelchair like can you walk like a couple of paces to go through the metal detector sometimes they don't ask that sometimes you skip the metal detector bit and instead someone pats you down and swabs whatever they swab you know the wheelchair or um, your bag still goes through but they also swabbed my walking stick you've kind of got two choices either to walk a little bit or to have someone pat you down they'd go around your arms and legs they check your body they do get quite um up and personal um and it doesn't bother me but i understand why it would bother some people but unfortunately there's no third alternative you either have to walk through the metal detector or you have to be patted down by someone but that still may be uncomfortable and i must i'm afraid there's not really a way around that i don't think they have a third option so you may need to think about beforehand which is less objectionable to you just so you're prepared and you know what to ask for those are the two options that I've experienced so when you're with them they quite often ask you questions about how much walking you can do and I've worked out that these cryptic how much walking can you do questions what they actually mean are one can you do a flight of stairs up to the plane when they say can you do steps they don't mean two steps so in the past I said yeah I can do a step and then they've been like here there's a flight of stairs and I've gone ah that's not what I meant um that was not clear obviously there's a language barrier sometimes so if they ask you if you can do steps they mean a flight of stairs in my experience also the reason they ask you how much walking you can do is can you walk along the aisle to your seat when you're on the plane the usual wheelchair cannot go onto the plane so they really try and work this out why they don't explain to you that's what they're working out I'm not entirely sure but I always get asked this how much can you walk and they don't say for what or whatever but I'm pretty certain it's because they want to know if they need to get an aisle chair and what an aisle chair does is it you get to the plane in the wheelchair so then you either get out and you walk along the aisle or they get you an aisle chair I have seen some videos online of airplanes that do not have an aisle chair um, and therefore disabled people who are unable to walk having to crawl or drag themselves down the plane now this is awful and it shouldn't happen but it does if you can't walk that amount you know on the plane then I would recommend making sure that the company you fly with does do the aisle chairs because otherwise you might be in a really uncomfortable situation which is obviously not your fault but it, it will be you who is you know <laughs> made to do that unfortunately so um i would i would recommend making sure you protect yourself from that by checking up on the company and their policies you know that kind of stuff just to make sure you're not going to have to do anything difficult like that so there's a couple of ways you can get to the plane if you tell them no you can't do the flight of stairs up to the plane sometimes they have a jetway just already prepared which is like a corridor that's up higher it's the same height as the, the plane basically so you walk from the building or you use a wheelchair if you're using one obviously um they don't always use those it really depends on the airport it depends how big it is how close it is to the building blah blah blah. don't entirely know how they decide when to use them but um, they're not always available so if there isn't a jetway available there are two things that might happen either they swap the stairs from the ground to the plane into a ramp so then the wheelchair gets pushed up the ramp or they provide this thing that I cannot work out what it's called but it's kind of like um it's kind of like a truck but it's on this lift so you get onto this little um platform it raises you up you get into the truck so you can do that all in a wheelchair if necessary um and then the truck can drive it's like a truck it then drives you to where the air airplane is and then it raises itself so that when you get out of the truck thingy you go straight into the air airplane door so it's odd but it, it really works there's usually other people in there with you depending on how busy it is sometimes they'll say only you can only have one person with you but 
sometimes they let your whole party with you. It really depends on how busy they are, but they should always let one person go with you. I, I would suggest that you should challenge it if they say you can't have someone with you because you absolutely can. And you know, you shouldn't have to be alone when doing things that are a little bit um, more complicated maybe than they should be. So after the flight, they come and pick you up right from the plane. They get you off in whatever way works for that airport. So they take you to passport control and then they'll take you to collect your baggage and they will help you with your baggage if you would like them to. And they also then take you wherever you're going. So if you need to go to a car rental or a bus stop or you know wherever you need to go, they can take you to the right area just to give you that little bit of extra help, which I think is really important. So that's kind of a rundown of what happens when you use special assistance. But to be quite honest, it's not the most efficient service. It's not ideal. It doesn't always work the way it should. I found Bristol Airport is excellent. Their staff really care. They've got a good system. Everyone seems to know what's going on. Whereas I found I've only used it from Bristol in the UK and I've I've been to both Nice and Geneva airports um, when I've used this while using special assistance and neither of them were great. I don't know if it's so I've been to I've been to Geneva twice and Nice once and neither of them were great. I don't know if it's a lower priority for French airports or it's just a um, coincidence, but they weren't great. Their staff were much shorter with me and much less caring, I would say. They kind of gave the impression that I was wasting their time and they didn't really think what they were doing was like a valid, like an important job. They just wanted to get it done with, which isn't like an ideal feeling. About a month ago, I went on holiday. My family wanted to ski. I went with them. On the way out there, when we got to the Geneva airport, I was picked up by the special assistants from the plane and she didn't have a wheelchair with her. And I said, do you have a wheelchair? And she said, do you need one? Like, yes, that's why I booked one. And she was like, oh, it's it's just down there. And I was like, okay, ha like, is it, re is it really close? No, it wasn't really close. She said, oh, it's just down there. We were on a jetway, just down there, just at the end of the jetway. And I thought, well, I can walk that far. It'd be a bit slow, you know, had a hard day, but better than arguing with this woman, right? So I just kind of got on with it. And then, so we passed the end of the jetway and then we went through some doors and it just seemed to keep going on. And she was irritated by this point because I was walking too slow. Um, and clearly she felt the need to rush and she was irritated by my slow walking, which um, wouldn't have been a problem had she bought the wheelchair. So clearly she got irritated and went off to find a wheelchair because I was too slow. So she brought the wheelchair back and we had to get in a lift to go downstairs. And it was quite a tight lift. And you know, my mum had her, hand luggage with her and she said oh it's a bit tight in here it's you know tricky to get all my stuff in and the um special assistance lady said yeah that's why i didn't bring a wheelchair <laughs> like um yeah it's a shame that the infrastructure is maybe not designed for a special assistance person a person in a wheelchair and a member of their party but that doesn't mean you don't bring a wheelchair a wheelchair is still needed she took us to the bus stop while we were getting a shuttle and she stopped the wheelchair and she said get out and i was so surprised so like and then she just said she she put the brakes on and went get out and i was like oh all right okay and then she left like started walking away my mom was like is this is this the bus stop we're supposed to be at and she was like yeah and i was like okay well there's no bus stop like sign didn't look like a bus stop she's like no this is a bus stop and we're like okay but we weren't certain we believed her in the end it was the bus stop but just the attitude of her seemed like she didn't want to be there and she had better things to do so sometimes things like that do happen i did get the help i needed i did get the wheelchair i did get the assistance we did go through little rooms where you don't have to queue at all like it didn't stop it being a useful service and it didn't stop it being way better than dealing with an airport on my own but it was a little unsettling and a little bit annoying to be honest. Things like that happen unfortunately but in my experience it's still worth it. I've had special assistance people ask me what's wrong with me just as like 
conversation or one time one time in an airport that wasn't Bristol I know that they forgot to come and collect me from the airplane so we just sat on the airplane waiting for the special assistants to arrive and the poor cabin crew were trying to clean and like get everything ready but they couldn't because we were there I don't know that they take it very seriously in Geneva though also I've had one incredibly lovely special assistants woman in Geneva but I've also had two people who made me feel like I was wasting their time so it's not like across the board they actively like as a whole airport don't want you there it's just I don't know if these people have like like a job where they cover multiple sections and they just are not trained well for this or they're not picked well for this or whatever it is but they are not ideal for the job I don't want to scare you off from using special assistance at an airport because to me it's completely game-changing even when it's a little bit frustrating and the people aren't great at their jobs it's still 10 times better than going to an airport having to walk all the way to a gate standing on all the queues you know that kind of stuff is just way too hard for me I just can't do it and so dealing with someone who's slightly irritated is um even for me who has strong very strong anxiety in social situations is honestly it's never been that bad it's always just been slightly annoying it's always always better than the usual way you get around an airport so I don't want to discourage you from trying it if you haven't tried it before because for me it's a game changer and it makes airports doable if they didn't have special assistance I just don't think I would ever be able to go anywhere because I can't do an airport they're too big there's too much walking there's too much standing in queues it's all just too much so though the systems aren't flawless and the people who they employ it could be better I think that there's definitely still just a lot of merit to it especially in airports like Bristol and you can really feel that they care I haven't tried out other um, airports in the UK just because Bristol's the closest one um, but they seem like they care they have a waiting area specifically for the purpose you know they just they have a system it works the staff are friendly they all seem to know what they're doing I mean I would recommend Bristol but I've not been to other airports in the UK so I I wouldn't know if there are better ones or if this was a standout I really don't know but compared to Nice and Geneva Bristol is significantly better not to scare you off from going to Nice or Geneva because their systems were a bit annoying but effective they, they, they worked they helped me they made traveling on a plane possible and a viable option for going on holiday so I think I want I want you to be aware that it's not all plain sailing but I also want you to be aware that it's still totally worth it in my opinion I will never ever go to an airport without getting special assistance again I don't think I can't imagine not getting special assistance because it makes airports so much easier I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful there are loads of videos on my channel and lots coming up in the future thank you so much for watching bye